POD7 effect. I think. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah, it's been a couple weeks. I uh, have been trying and trying and trying to figure out how to get my speed uh, up so that I didn't have to broadcast in low quality, but here we are, broadcasting in low quality. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda is quickly coming up upon us, so um, I figured I might as well just grin and bear it <laughs> as far as the quality goes. and. Uh, just get on with it and try to get as much done as I can. I don't think I'm going to be able to do what I wanted to do, uh, unfortunately. Today, we're going to do just a one or two side quests. I kind of uh, decided that... Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander, I'm glad you're in the area. We've got an emergency situation, and you're the only one I can trust to get the job done. How can I help, Admiral? Biotic fanatics have hit a medical research station with a psychotropic drug. The drugs have temporarily driven researchers crazy, and the biotics are effectively using them as human shields. So if I shoot everything that moves, a lot of researchers are going to die. Exactly. A normal team could handle the biotics, but a lot of innocent researchers would die during the operation. That's why I contacted you. I'm hoping you can keep the casualties to a minimum. I'll do everything within my power to bring those researchers back safely, Admiral. I know you will, Commander. I'm sending you the station coordinates now. Fifth lead out. So we're probably not going to do that quest. <laughs> uh... Because I've, I've decided I just want to get through this game and get to the, uh, the story missions and, you know, complete it and move on to Mass Effect 2. Uh, because there is a lot to do in Mass Effect 2. So, I would argue there's even more to do in Mass Effect 2 than there is in Mass Effect 3. And Mass Effect 3 is massive. Like, we'll, we'll still do Garrus and Tally's, uh, and Rex's, uh, loyal, quote-unquote loyalty missions in this game, but... Other than that, I'm hoping to just go to the, uh, the story missions, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I can't remember which one is which. So the uh, the mission, the side mission, I wanted to keep in before we move on to just only story missions uh, involves Cerberus, and uh, they're a pretty big deal. So <laughs> I kind of have to keep them in. Keep going with our usual crew here. Since we're on, I'm on casual casual difficulty to keep this <laughs> moving because uh, if, if it was on norm if it was on normal it wouldn't be too bad but I know a lot of people like to see gameplay on hard or like the highest difficulty and uh, this series would be 5,000 episodes long if I tried to play on veteran or insanity so <laughs> it's not gonna happen so we're not gonna fart around too much here Okay, I think this is the, uh, I think this is the one I'm, I'm hoping to do, not the one that we just got, so. Gonna probably stop and get this, uh, element here, just cause you get more money for doing it. And we're gonna need some better weapons if we're gonna blast through this game. Always lets you out on the side you don't want to get out on. <laughs> and we 
leveled up too. That's always a good perk. Uh, let's see, we got our sniper all the way up. Sniper. Oh, let's get commando full. For Liara. Let's get our first aid up. And Tally. Her armor needs to be up. So. Okay. Let's go. So the uh, the all the footage that's coming out of Andromeda right now is just so crazy. Like, <laughs> I guess because I've been playing the first game, it just looks so completely different. That's gonna. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, here's the moment of truth. I'm pretty sure this is uh, the Cerberus mission, but I don't know. We'll find out. There's always like this one big room in these uh, research facility things. Well, they're immediately hostile, so... Go, go, go. Okay, there's that one. Okay, so we can't get through that barrier. Aha. This is the Cerberus mission. And we know what those are. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm getting a uh, thing on my Twitch that I'm lagging on low quality. This is so ridiculous. Good job, Liara. Forget where the switch is for this thing. Or if it just automatically goes open. So we know exactly what those things were. <laughs> That's the Rachni. Somebody's been studying the Rachni other than uh, Matriarch Venezia and uh, uh, Saren and his faction. So. But to what purpose? Probably the same purpose as everyone, right? To make a weapon. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, other things to talk about. Uh, the way in Mass Effect Andromeda that you're going to be able to basically have whatever you want for your powers and your skills and stuff is kind of bonkers. Well, I'm trying to imagine how that's going to be uh, balanced <laughs> at all. Uh, but the enemies look really cool too. There's, uh, there's one that reminded me a lot of uh, an enemy that we'll see in Mass Effect 3. A big ol' like, tanky villain. Oop, missed the rocket. I always think these things are gonna unshield those big turret kind of things. Yeah, if this was the uh, the mission we just got from uh, the Admiral, where uh, there's lots of biotics and stuff, we would have been in pretty big trouble, I think, because <laughs> I'm terrible against uh, biotic enemies.
these guys are uh, new. <laughs> We'll be running into them fairly quickly. <laughs> I wonder what Cerberus horrors will find at the next base. Oh, don't worry. There's plenty of them. So if you are an eagle-eyed viewer, you notice those things were called Thorian creepers, and you'll understand <laughs> what those were. On our, on our next big story mission, so... Now, when, uh, when I play Mass Effect casually, I usually don't ever look at the map. I just go exploring, so this is <laughs> kind of really strange to me. Because usually I'm going all over the place looking for elements and trying to get as much stuff as I possibly can. Oh, oh here it is. <laughs> I thought it was down in that little hole there. But... Out. You're supposed to uh, park on a level surface for the Mako, but... As you can see, <laughs> it's not always a necessary thing. We got 11,000 credits for that, which is like one tenth of the best gun in the game, I think. Or no, one, I guess it'd be 1%, because I'm pretty sure the best gun in the game is a million credits. Those things are going to try to snipe us from all the way down there. But we're going to check this out first because it's pretty crazy. There are a few children's toys and some ragged clothes stuffed inside the top of this monument along with a Prothean data disk. So there's little pyramids and uh, like floating orbs and stuff. Hey! 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 No good. No es bueno. And uh, if you go around and you pick up all those, eventually it's kind of revealed that the Protheans visited Earth when uh, we were still uh, just <laughs> basically starting to wear clothes and stuff, from what I remember. Basically like, uh, you get a, a memory, like a shared d a DNA memory kind of like the, the way the Prothean Beacon worked with one of your ancestors. Or at least a human ancestor. Oh, I thought I saw... Okay. Eh, doesn't look like anything useful, but we can sell it at least. So this is, uh, this is the big part here. Okay. So as you can see, there's a Rachni in there.
And one of the strategies you can do is you can just unlock this, and it'll be absolute mayhem. <laughs> but uh, I prefer to do it like this. So here's the dearly departed Admiral Kohoku, who will take his uh, Dr. Michelle subplot secrets to his grave, unfortunately. Poor guy. At least he didn't seem to suffer that much anyway. Since he, they apparently drugged him either to death or otherwise. Uh, advanced first aid. That sounds, that's always good. Um, Get her hacking up so when we fight the Geth some more, she can mess them up. There shouldn't be anything better, I don't think. Ooh, there's a pretty good pistol there for Liara. <laughs> I was gonna say, wow, that's really good, but it's. Just good for her. She hasn't. She doesn't have one. Ah, oh, come on. Liara can't wear anything that heavy, so that sucks. So, what do we need to do for the rest of that? Head to Neferon in the Columbia system of the Voyage Cluster, okay. See, he gave me this quest and, it's an, and he said, I'm glad you're there, but it's in a completely different <laughs> cluster. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, one of the other reasons why it's been so long since I streamed is, uh, besides trying to figure out how best to <laughs> do without all the lag and stuff, is I was considering playing through the rest of the game <laughs> and doing all the quests, and then, uh, what you can do in the Mass Effect games is you can export your previous save to a new save, and you'll be level 30 or whatever already when you start. And so I was thinking about uh, replaying all the way through and then getting back to this point uh, just so I would be leveled up and then I could go straight into Mass Effect 2 with a level 60 Shepard. Uh, but I decided uh, <laughs> that might take too long. I don't know, we'll, we'll see, but I figured I might as well just play through a normal first time through playthrough of Mass Effect, and then maybe once I finish Mass Effect 1, I'll just quickly play through it again. Like, stay up all night and play through it again, and then I'll have a level 60 Shepard for Mass Effect 2, because <laughs> uh, it's kind of necessary if you want... Uh, to have a really good time in Mass Effect 2. Uh, like you start out, if you're level 60, when you start Mass Effect 2, you automatically get like 600,000 credits or something like that. And uh, you basically just get a lot of perks for uh, both both importing a, uh, a Mass Effect 1 save and a level 60 Shepard, so... It's definitely worth it, because... <laughs> Uh, part of the, 
the good guy run of Mass Effect 2 is collecting uh, materials, and that takes forever. It's definitely going to be the kind of thing that I do off camera. So we're heading here to uh, take out the main Cerberus base, quote unquote. Um, Cerberus is kind of like one of those shadow organizations. So, uh, it's kind of like Hydra, when you cut off one head, you two grow back, kind of thing. Ugh, that was some crazy lag. Okay. Um, no, not equipment. So that's the main base. We'll check out this anomaly just for the heck of it, since we're here. <laughs> If it's not on top, like in between a bunch of mountains or something, anyway. If it looks like it's gonna be really hard to get in and out of, then I'll skip it. But uh, hopefully, this doesn't look too crappy video quality wise. I apologize if it is, but I'd prefer it to look like potato vision than to just have lag spikes every 30 seconds. So. important to me is to get across the, the story aspect of the series, so... of the series and Dragon Age, so... A lot of people always ask, uh... like, well, what... what is Mass Effect about? <laughs> and it's kind of hard to say, honestly, even though there's a story to it. Uh... like on a... On a, a philosophical level, it's hard. It's hard to say because it goes in a lot of different directions depending on how you play. So if you play as a good guy, as a soldier and a war hero from Earth, then uh, it's basically like the typical hero's journey kind of story. And it, in, to me, anyway, it involves a lot of uh, transhumanism, which we'll get more into in Mass Effect 2. Heading out. So this is the fun part of these kinds of missions where... <laughs> This is why sniping is the best part of this game. Because they can't see me yet. But... He's dead. Oh, they got a sniper. Boom. One more guy down here. Got him. Yep. Just like that. <laughs> No annoying driving around while shooting. And you'd think for their main base they'd have like five of those turret things, but. <laughs> Alright. I oh, definitely need to switch weapons here. Liara, why are you using an assault rifle? Tally, why are you using an assault rifle? No wonder they weren't doing anything in those labs. <laughs> I can't remember if we talk to anybody in here or not, or you just blow everybody away. Well, there's immediately a hostile <laughs> on the mini-map, so I'm guessing not much talking is going to get done here. I think they're going to destroy me. I will destroy you. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that or not, but... <laughs> They are planning to destroy me. Oh. Okay. That's why I like, kind of prefer to hang back in here because it's a choke for me. And the AI almost always just comes in to here, even on the higher difficulties. Like if you shoot, if you come out here and shoot at one or two of them, 
They'll start chasing you back into there. Forget what this part is, but mm. okay. The quest marker's in here, so we'll just go in here and get it over with. There's just a data drive or something. Yeah. You cautiously press a few buttons, and an alarm chimes. The op optical database is flashing itself. Quickly, you copy as many files as you can to to your hard suit's internal computer. It's memory wiped, the computer shuts down, the files are sure to be encrypted, but you've got time to crack them. Yeah, so. And for some reason, <laughs> the quest marker stays. I don't know why, but that happens a lot in this game, believe it or not. I guess it's not that hard to believe, but. Uh, one of the other things I've noticed about the coverage going into Mass Effect Andromeda is, <laughs> like, even Bioware themselves are kind of on the, uh, like, it's like they've succumbed to the narrative that it's only about banging ali aliens and stuff, like the series. It's kind of weird. <coughs> Excuse me. But it does look like they're back to the uh, the exploration style gameplay that they had in the first game, which I'm really happy about. Because I thought that was the coolest part of this game. I like I appreciate the like the action movie style of the second and third games, but uh, the the exploration was sorely missed uh, for me. Even though I would still say Mass Effect Three is probably my favorite video game. Uh, bar none. Well, I say that, but <laughs> Red Dead Redemption is up there too, but, uh, yeah. This, the, the part about exploring planets and, uh, running around in the Mako and stuff. So we're gonna do, uh, Garrus's thing here because <laughs> I've forgotten where Tally's is. I guess I could just look it up on my phone while I'm talking to you guys. Um, oh. For some reason I was looking up quokkas. And there's just pictures of quokkas on my phone. Uh, we're going to do Garrus's and probably Tally's. And then we'll call it an episode. I'm not sure how long I've been streaming, actually. I guess I could do that on the Twitch app, too. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I can do that pretty easily, looks like, so. Uh, you don't talk to Tally to get her mission, you just kind of stumble upon, uh, you just kind of, uh, if you explore every galaxy, you, just inevitably end up. Uh, 
going to there, so now I have my chat up on my phone, so I can finally play in full uh, full screen if I want to. I can remember how to do that without stopping the stream. <laughs> I don't think I can, unfortunately. <laughs> See what happens here. Nope, don't remember. That's okay. It's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of bright because it's of like a bright white box on the side of the screen. It kind of hurts the eyes. So we're done on this planet. Uh, I actually didn't advertise this one because it's... <laughs> I started it before 7 o'clock in the morning Central Time, American Central Time, so... Uh, don't feel bad if you missed it, quote unquote, because I didn't even bother to tweet about it or anything, so... Because uh, I kind of want to get this done and it seems like the only time I have time to do a lot of streaming is uh, in the morning, right after I wake up. Transmission so. coming in, Commander. Oh dear. You're gonna want to hear this one. Greetings, Probably not. Commander Shepard. I represent a party interested in obtaining information on Cerberus activities. Who are you, and who do you represent? Who I am is inconsequential. Suffice to say, I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. You see, Admiral Kahoku contacted my employer looking for information on the location of any Cerberus facilities. We provided that information on the promise that he would turn over copies of all files gathered from the Cerberus systems to us. These are classified Alliance files. I'm not handing them over to you. Be reasonable, Commander. Cerberus was operating outside Alliance jurisdiction. You don't owe them any loyalty. The Alliance is just going to file this information away in some archive, but no secret stays hidden forever. Eventually, someone somewhere will deliver it into our hands. Might as well be you. Transmit the files to us and you will be well compensated. What are you going to do with this information? Information is a commodity. It can be bought, sold, or traded. Why my employer desires this information is not my concern. I am only the buyer. My loyalty is to the Alliance, not the Shadow Broker. That is unfortunate, Commander. My employer will remember this the next time you need something from us. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I'm not gonna sweat the Shadow Broker. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not even gonna do that. Okay, so... What was Garrus's... where was Garrus's thing at? I can't remember. Was it in this system? I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to back out and look in the journal thing again and... Make sure that's where it is because... I can't remember. I've actually, like when Mass Effect 3 first came out and I beat it two or three times, I went back and played Mass Effect 1 many, many times. And, uh. Kepler Verge, okay. And, uh. So I, it was easy to remember everything because I played it probably seven or eight times in a row. Uh, but then. Obviously, I, that started getting old, so I started playing the other games, and I ended up playing Mass Effect 3 many, 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 many times uh, on top of multiplayer, so... Um, After doing that so many times over the last five years, uh, I ended up forgetting a lot of the names, anyway, of this kind of stuff. Might as well get some free XP. 
free XP and money. Here we go. This is Garrus's uh, side mission. So, of course, we're going to be taking Garrus with us on this one. Uh, Got to have Blueberry with us, as always, so... She'll be pretty helpful on this one, if I recall. See if we can get Garrus a better, uh... Yeah, let's auto level. Since I... Since I never <laughs> use Garrus in the first game, it's fine to auto level him, I think. Uh, let's make sure he's got a decent assault rifle. can have that one, just for the heck of it. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Like I said, it's early in the morning, so <coughs> I had breakfast, but still have morning voice a little bit. <sighs> Water. Okay. Go ahead and save here. Uh, the weather in my area has been... Uh, insane to, <laughs> for the lack of a better descriptor there uh it goes from like 38 like lo high 30s at night to high 70s during the day <laughs> it seems like and uh that's no fun let me tell you i'm glad i have seven grenades going into this section and you're gonna see why here in a second. Okay. So this is a maze. This is like a really uh This is a really unique mission in this game. Come on. Nice. Is he gonna go the long way? Get in there. Yep, <laughs> he went all the way around. Well, this last one's really strong. Somehow I got one point in Intimidate. I don't remember if you start like that or not, but... Oh, that's kind of funny, if you ask me. Okay. Liara, what can we do for you? And Garrus. Okay. Thanks, Liara. Oh. <laughs> it's green, but you can't open it. So this is what uh, these colony-type ships look like in the cabin. It's always kind of cool to see different ship interiors. And because this is obviously reused several times. That's, I think this is a, a something people haven't really looked at before, probably, but um, yeah. Uh, since this is used a lot of times, like there'll be stuff in that room on a different ship or uh, XP to be gotten in there, so 
Just depends on what mission you're on. Thank you. Thank you for saving me from those things. Command. The jig is up. That's Dr. Saleon. What? My name is Hart. Dr. Hart. Please, get me out of here. Are you sure it's him? Positive. There's no escape this time, Doctor. I'd harvest your organs first, but we don't have the time. You're crazy. He's crazy! Please, don't let him do this to me. We'll take him in, drop him off at the military. But we have him. We can't let him get away. Not again. If he dies, we'll never know what he's been up to, or how he did it. We'll take him in, interrogate him, and he'll serve his time. I... Okay. You're right. You're a very lucky Salarian. You owe the commander your life. Oh, thank you so very much. <laughs> So he dies anyway. What was the point of that? You can't predict how people will act, Garrus, but you can control how you'll respond. In the end, that's what really matters. Yeah. I don't think I ever met anyone like you, Commander. Well, I guess we're done here. I don't know if my decryption is high enough, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. See, on a, on a second playthrough I'd be able to open everything, basically. Which is the, uh, why I should have done that, probably. But. I should have done it before I even started the series, honestly, but uh, I thought it would be poignant to show all the level leveling up and stuff you have to do from the first time through, so I didn't want to misrepresent <laughs> how overpowered you can be in a second playthrough. There's another fun window out in the space. What did we pick up there? I thought I picked up some kind of a uh, biotic amp. Yeah, that's not any better. So. That one's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna take that. <laughs> um, none of these armors are better. Should have a better armor for Garrus by now. There we go. I don't want to give him too much cool stuff because uh, I don't use him <laughs> very often, so it'd be kind of a waste. So basically what happens, why that gave that uh, menu there to le return or leave is uh, you can uh, miss out. Like I'm not sure if you can actually go back. So I would think you would have to be able to because there's items still there if you don't have your yeah, it's still giving me the option to board, so... Okay, let's go do tallies now. Okay. Just had to remind myself what the, the galaxy name is. I think it's this one, yeah. Message coming in from the brass at Arcturus. Patching it through. Normandy? Admiral Hackett here. We're getting reports of a marked increase in geth activity in the Skillian Verge. Surveillance drones have identified geth outposts on four different planets in the Armstrong Cluster. We need someone to take them out. We have any idea what they're after? Hard to say. They may be just gathering intel on us. Or maybe they're setting up staging grounds for hit-and-run attacks on human colonies. I'm on it, Admiral. 
Finding Saren is still your top priority, but you've got experience fighting again. You're the logical choice to take out these outposts. We're transmitting all the locations of known Geth outposts. Oh, that was weird. Cluster to the Normandy now. Admiral hack it out. If you're wearing headphones, then you probably noticed that too, but <laughs> basically what happened was, uh, in that last sentence there, his, uh, audio, his audio went to left ear only. <laughs> this is my first time playing through with headphones on, so, uh, <laughs> I've never noticed that before. That's kind of funny. Okay, nothing here. So it sounds like in Mass Effect Andromeda that, like, it'll have a similar uh, galaxy map style thing where you zoom into planets, uh, but every single planet will be able to land on. I'm not sure if that's right or not, but that's what it sounds like from the the marketing, which would be crazy ridiculous. Okay. Yep, you fight a lot of Geth on these red planets, so <laughs> get used to that. And we're gonna take Garrus and Tally this time, I think. Because we're gonna be doing a lot of sniping, and Garrus, as terrible as he can be in this game, <laughs> sniping, uh, it's still helpful, so. Boom! Oh, one of the. Man, I can't believe I forgot to even talk about this, but since the last time I streamed, <laughs> something huge has happened. Uh, we've found Trappist 1, which is super crazy, beyond crazy. Seven planets in one system, and they're, I think they said if, if our solar system were like that, we'd be able to see the surface of Mars from our, uh, with the naked eye, which is crazy. So I'm pretty hyped about that. Like, we found it just in time to where we can send a probe and I'll probably hear about it or see pictures of it within my lifetime. Which is pretty nuts to think about. Because I think they said they're launching a probe in 2018, which is really fast <laughs> for NASA, especially under the current administration. But I think they probably just had to sell it as they might have oil. <laughs> they might have oil and resources that we can steal. I mean, claim. Uh, okay. And so usually for stuff like this, they have ways you can get up easier than just climbing a vertical wall. <laughs> but I'm doing this because it'll be faster, but I usually just do the straight wall, <laughs> the vertical wall thing. This one is, I don't usually do this one. I do this one last, I think, most of the time, if I remember right. it's the one I'm thinking of. So yeah, you can see the light up there. That's part of it. Uh, this one has a lot of guys on the ground. A lot of geth on the ground. And uh... It's kind of like an ambush style thing, so... Oh uh, god. <laughs> Here we go. I said I wasn't going to do the vertical wall thing, but I guess I didn't find the right path. So you get to see the power of the Mako. And it's ultra grip tires. Okay. Yeah, see, they've got a marked out path that you're supposed to go up. It, uh, <laughs> it just didn't do it, I guess. Well, no, that's not good. See all these spires around. You know what that means. Garrus, why do you keep switching weapons?
trying to think of anything happened in my life <laughs> since the last time I uh, streamed. I live a pretty boring, depressing life. <laughs> so, not much usually happens. Oh man. That's pretty bad. Failing on the first button press. Come on in. Nice pile of bodies there. <laughs> Can't remember if there's anything worth going back here for. Yeah, you can open the door, so... <laughs> and there's more enemies! Oh god. <laughs> Lead them back here, Garrus. <laughs> it's okay. Oh my god. Oh dear. Gotta wait for my circle to go down. <laughs> Alright, Tally, calm down. I mean, I guess I could have my sniper out for these guys, but... There we go. Yep, so they tried to use their, uh... Shoot, what are they called? The husks. Tried to use some husks to ambush us, but... Since I already knew that, <laughs> the ambush doesn't work. The first time you play this mission, it's pretty crazy, though. Not gonna lie. Take cover. And the ambush isn't done. Oh. Hello. Oh. Yeah, melee! <laughs> It's very rare in the first game to get melee kills, from my experience. One down, three to go. Uh, there's an anomaly over there, but... That's the last of them. So what happened there is there wasn't a uh, confirmation that all the enemies were down, so I had to go back out and <laughs> have Tally confirm and then come back, so... Before I could return to the Normandy. So we're just gonna go kind of in order here. There's not really any main base uh, until you clear them all, so... If I remember right, it's like you clear all four and then they're like, oh, you need to go to this system again. <laughs> I wish it was this one. <laughs> oh well. Uh, okay. Oh, it is this one. So, if I could remember which one the final thing was on, I would definitely save that one for last. But because then you wouldn't have to go anywhere. You just <laughs> zoom back in and land there again. This is a cold planet. Like. That was another thing, is the return of hazards on planets in Andromeda, which is going to be kind of cool. Uh, it seems kind of weird that the system they're going with is like, you have to reach a checkpoint, and that serves as like a bubble shield that you can go into and uh, restore everything, but I don't know. I'm sure it plays out better than it sounds anyway. 
So lots of potential for Thresher Maws, as you can see the map there. Uh, there's like a fake out post over here where you go there and you kill all the, the geth and there's a thing you can interact with but it's never worked for me somehow. Like you're supposed to be able to turn off the beacon but it doesn't for whatever reason. Like I might as well just go show it since I'm talking about it but... Are you sure I'm going the right way? Oh man. <laughs> It'll be worth it I think. Uh, one of the things that I'm kind of sketchy about with Andromeda is the jetpack. <laughs> the jetpack thing. Uh, I feel like that's not necessary in these games. Like, it'll just serve as, like, to complicate paddle more than make it more efficient, in my opinion, so... I don't know. Aha! Thresher Maw fight. Guaranteed. Because I remember this thing. Heading out. Oh, there's no hazard on this. Oh, crap. So that, that's another thing, is the Thresher Maws have been around since the, <laughs> the Protheans, which is kind of crazy to think about. I love how it looks like it just fell, <laughs> like, from orbit. So basically if you just drive around in a circle here, <laughs> Like always, every Thresher Maw fight, just drive around in a circle and you'll be fine, for the most part. Oh dear. Come on, just die already. So, if, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but if you kill it and it's, uh animation where it goes down into the ground. Sometimes you can fight it like immediately a second time and you'll get double XP. We didn't get to do that this time, but... Oh, we did. No? Okay. Maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> it just randomly happens sometimes. It's pretty funny. Uh, where's the marker? Here we go. So yeah, <laughs> these uh, Geth had some husks with them, so. Alright, now to the actual <laughs> point of this planet. So this wasn't the one I was thinking of. There's another one where there's a little beacon and you go to it and it doesn't look like anybody's there and then Geth appear and ambush you and uh, it's so close to the place where you're supposed to be going that the other turrets can actually, like the heavy turrets, can shoot at you from there. So it can be a pretty difficult fight, if, on your first try anyway. If you know what's coming, then you can just uh, go there and then jump back into Mako and <laughs> run away and uh, snipe everything from afar. So. I mean, I know a lot of people probably think that's cheap, but considering the enemy, the turrets can shoot you from halfway across the map, if they have a line of sight on you, then I don't think that's fair either. So I fight fire with fire. Plus the sniper rifles are just so powerful, it's like, why wouldn't you one-shot everything if you can? Hostile contact. Who's first to die? We 
Get that one. Okay, I must have. All right, let's pull the Mako closer, shall we? <laughs> Redeploying. There we go. So you might have seen something scary there, and I just got hit big time. <laughs> wow. So, just for the sake of it, let's go ahead and fight this thing like you're supposed to. It's usually much more preferable to take out all of those snipers first, but this way it can be fun too. One. See, Garrus, Garrus got one <laughs> so far. Nope, that's that's not it, Garrus. <laughs> Believe it or not. Oh, he got that one too. Good job, Garrus. Boom. Get tend to be the most fun to snipe too because you can see their heads from a million miles away. See, if you fought the way they want you to fight, you would be uh, shooting at them, like those things would fall right on top of you and you'd be kind of SOL. Garrus, what are you doing? There you go. Oh, there's one left. Good job. Let's level up first. Yeah, so I don't know why sniping is so powerful in this game. <laughs> I guess because the, the maps are so uh, wide open and you can see everybody from forever away. But... Garrus. Tally. Master Overload. That'll be helpful for when we fight... Uh, Saren, because his shields are pretty high. So, like I said, after I finish this mission, I'll call it an episode, and then I'll I'll do my outro, and we'll uh, start the next episode, which will be going to the next story mission, I think. Because I can't remember exactly where Rex is... <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll do Rex's too, just for the heck of it, because it's a one, it's like one outpost you have to take out, so. And if I don't end up finishing, I pro I'm probably not going to finish the game today, so what I'll end up doing is, uh, going to, I'll go to all these missions, and then, uh, I'll, after I do the, the Pharaoh's mission, I'll call it a day streaming, and then I'll go through every uh, system and do all the surveying stuff like this to get our uh, XP and money and stuff up. Just so I have that done, and I'll be as close to <laughs> level 30 as I can be, anyway. And then we'll finish the game on another day, and uh, and I'll play through again. <laughs> and then we'll start Mass Effect 2. And I'll play through the next one on, like, either normal or hardcore, so I can get more XP. Because otherwise I'd have to start another uh, run, if I remember right. 
trying to remember what these anomalies are. That must be the signal one I was talking about. But let's just do the outpost. So like I was talking about earlier, rather than going up and over, it's actually probably like a little bit faster to just go around this part. Of course it's not like there's any speedrun speed run strats because uh, <laughs> you can beat the game in under an hour with speedrun strats, I think. Or maybe under an hour and a half. Uh, but it involves a lot of glitching, and you don't have to do any of this stuff, so... So it's not like anybody has routed Tally's loyalty mission, <laughs> or anything like that. This one is cool, I think, because you get an unusual opportunity uh, when fighting the Geth here, if I remember correctly. We'll see, this guy. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so here's the, the opportunity I was talking about. Uh, you get to fight the Geth dropship. It's pretty nutter butters. You can only damage it, I think, by uh, using the rocket ship, or rocket launcher, so... be interesting to see if there was a speedrun kind of way where you could uh, hit this hard enough to where you could actually kill it before it leaves, but I don't think there is. Why can't I hit these guys? I guess you do empty its health all the way, and then let's have some fun, shall we? We. Tag him and tag. Just one more planet. And then the real signal, if I remember correctly. And it's like a whole base full of geth, if I remember right.
I think this one is protected by heavy turrets. Like you have to go up a long winding uh, road full of them. But it's not too hard. Yeah, you can kind of see the path up there already. <laughs> and yes, you can get sniped by the turrets from all the way out here, basically. Pretty ridiculous. You can kind of see one right now. I wonder if he can see us. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a very rare case of being able to take out one of those towers from that far away. Like one of the other options is to drive up that way and sneak up behind some of these, but it's harder to hit them because they'll be lower than you and because this is a tank, you can't shoot below a certain level of your car, so not worth it. Hashtag not worth it. And who is shooting from up there? Okay. Doesn't matter. Peekaboo! Whoa! <laughs> that was pretty cool. I always thought it was weird how, like, there's not much articulation on the on the actual cannon on your Mako, but for some reason you can shoot like way up here with it, but you can't shoot down. Almost to the edge of the map. <laughs> this is a great sniping opportunity. Secure. Not really, Garrus. Ooh. Just got hit there. You're shooting through the mountain, that's not fair. <laughs> This receiver's picking up some kind of transmission. Based on the signal strength, I'd say it's coming from inside this star cluster. It must be a message from the primary Geth base. We can use the signal to lock onto its location and take them out. It must be a message from the primary Geth base. We can use the signal to lock onto its location and take them out. You lead. I'll follow. Right behind you, Shepard. So one of the other weird, like, I don't know if it'd be a plot hole necessarily, but just like a why, <laughs> why can't you do it, is uh, you would think a ship of our 
magnitude would be able to shoot from orbit or like bomb stuff from orbit so it's kind of strange especially when it shows you the the normandy swooping down and dropping off the the mako it's like why couldn't we just shoot up the base <laughs> with the normandy but that would be too cheap i guess it'd be cool if you could do it like once at once a game or something Oh, so this doesn't even show up until you do those other four things, okay. Um, yeah, I just forgot. It's been a while since I played this all the way through, so. I think the last time I played this game, I was getting achievements, and I found out you could just, uh, like for stuff like use overload 150 times, you could just go to the Citadel and go to a fast travel terminal and use your power on that over and over and over again. So uh, that's what I did for most of the <laughs> of the powers, and it was really easy. You just had to make a new shepherd every time, which was kind of annoying, but because you'd have to get engineer powers and then soldier powers and then biotic powers. I mean, I had all the soldier ones, I think. But the hardest one, from what I remember, was the Metagel, I think. Because you could only hurt yourself so much, and then you'd have to find uh, medikits in different places. And you'd have to like go do a mission so that the, the Normandy would restock Metagel. So that took even longer than usual. I, don't, I guess I wasn't smart enough to just go down on a planet and then come right back and see if it had uh, restocked, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Pretty much the only uh, achievements I don't have in Mass Effect games are beat this game on insanity because it's just above my skill level, period. So on higher difficulties, this is definitely not the recommended <laughs> way to do this. Because these things will like one-shot kill you. And I have screwed up, apparently. There we go. So usually the game writes itself by now, but... Oh, of course. There we go. Oh, there's one more. There we go. All targets down. Guys, I hate those things. Got him. Well, somebody over here is really just going to town. Something's in the way. 
There's nothing there. Say, so there's at least one more guy in here. There we go. Oh gosh. Yeah. As the last geth falls, you hear music from across the room. On the monitor, a quarian stands before a hushed crowd, warbling a mournful a cappella of worlds and innocence lost. The recorded song is dis dispatched to the Geth worlds behind the Perseus Veil. The transmitter shuts down. <laughs> so unnecessary. Wow. I'm right here. Oh. Figured you'd have something to say, Tally. <laughs> but uh, I guess you have to talk to her back on the ship. Damn it. <laughs> it's an easy one, too. You discover a number of encrypted Geth data files. In the proper hands, it could reveal much about the evolution of the Geth since the banishment of the Quarians. So. Ready whenever you are. Okay. Can't remember if there's a room up above here. Like there are every other time you come into this space. <laughs> this, uh, this kind of garage outpost. I wonder if I can see it from up here. Now there's no door thing on there, so it should be good. Oh, uh, but the, <laughs> the collector in me wants to see and make sure, for sure. Oh, I got all my grenades back. I didn't notice that. There must be a thing on casual difficulty. So I've only had one lag spike so far, but I'm on lowest quality. So this must be what I'm going to have to stick with, unfortunately. I don't know why either, like, I can stream, or I can watch uh, 1080p, 60 frames and stuff all the time, but... Um... Let's get the salt. Now the fun part, we uh, get to go talk to Tally again, <laughs> which if you remember from earlier in the series, the talking to everybody is the best part in the game. And it's important to do this because otherwise she never brings it up. Like you don't talk to her, you don't get a cutscene where she asks you about it or anything. So you have to go do this. And it's a decision that affects the next two games, so you definitely want to do it. <laughs> In my opinion. To what degree it affects the games is debatable, apparently. Uh, but I think it's pretty important if you're a Paragon Shepherd, so... Plus we need to talk to Garrus after screwing him over in his lust for revenge. Commander, so. I, what can I do for you? Something bothering you? It's Saren. I'm starting to wonder whether we'll ever find you. He's always one step ahead of us, and he's got those damn Geth. We're getting close, Garrus. We'll find him. I wish I had your confidence. I just can't stand the thought of him getting away with everything he's done. I know you're doing everything you can. And if anyone can catch him, it's you, but if there's anything else I can do to help, anything, just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. Thank you, Garrus. I'll keep that in mind. Just make sure you're ready to go when we do catch him. Yes, ma'am. You can count on me. Thanks for hearing me out. I appreciate it. Can I ask you something, Commander? What is it? Are you worried that the Council might be protecting Saren? I mean, they were really dragging their heels before. What if we find him? 
bring him back to the Citadel, and they refuse to act. I get the feeling this isn't a question. Speak your mind, Garrus. Well, maybe we shouldn't give them the chance, Commander. In my opinion, Saren's too dangerous to be kept alive. Too much could happen. He could escape, or the Council might let him go. If we find him, when we find him, I say we make sure we stop him permanently. If Saren won't listen to reason, if he forces my hand, I'll kill him in a heartbeat. But only if it's absolutely necessary. But what's the point in keeping him alive? It just gives him an opportunity to escape or convince the Council to listen to him. And what about the Geth? They might try to free him. We know more about Saren's plans than anyone. But what do we really know? If we just kill him, we lose the chance to find out. Yeah, I see your point. Do you really think there's more to know, other than the fact that he's a raving lunatic? Maybe, maybe not. But it's not a chance I'm willing to take. Yes, ma'am. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard? <laughs> I've got some unfinished business with my family. But that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Who has it? Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, 
fates in the hands of Taun Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods, all fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. So long, Rex. Shepard. Shepard. <laughs> so we just picked up his loyalty Commander. mission, so hopefully we'll be able to do that. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? I'm off duty until tomorrow. I was gonna have a small drink, a bit of a celebration, if you're interested. What's the occasion? It's Armistice Day, when the first contact war ended. My family always marks it. Since I'm the only Williams aboard, I thought I'd ask you. Seems like an odd thing to celebrate. That was 26 years ago. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Don't tell me you don't know about my family. My commanders always find out. It's not in my files or something? There's almost nothing in your files. Technical scores and a list of crap assignments. There's a reason for the crap assignments. I'm a werewolf. I'm General oh, Ramsey, God. the commander of the Shanxi garrison in the war. The only human ever to surrender to an alien race. I see. That's why you drive yourself so hard. A Williams has to be better than the best, if only to avoid suspicion. That's what my dad told me the night before he retired. It takes a special kind of thick-headed to march into a job where your family's blacklisted. I did it anyway. I'm not gonna let our name go down with Arnold and Quisling. Grandad deserved better than that. So basically what happened is, uh, Ashley's grandfather was a general, and there was a decisive battle in the Shanxi or whatever it's called, yeah, Shanxi, and uh, he surrendered, and that kind of marked the end of the first contact war, from what I remember. And uh, feel free to correct me in the comment comments if you <laughs> if you know better. Uh, but yeah, and so her family has had to carry that burden ever since, basically, as. You know, like the traitor is saying, even though his he, his decision saved humanity, basically. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna try to comfort her as best as we can. He refused to sacrifice his men just to save face for humanity. You planning to throw yourself on a sword to save face for him? Would it make a difference? He's gone now. Dad's gone too. And who would it impress? I'll never be good enough for the Alliance. So now you know gonna kick me off the ship skipper you're a valuable part of my crew Williams if I want an opinion from the head I go to Elenko when I want one from the heart I go to you I also play a mean game of pool but anyway I've got things to do before we land I'm sure you do too what's your opinion of the last mission not sure I buy dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking their family right I think she's being straight with us or at least I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Hey, want me to ask her about her sex life? Might be illuminating. I don't think she's used to teasing, good-natured or otherwise. Ah, no fun, Skipper. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Dismissed, Chief. I don't remember if we, uh, if I went over that. <laughs> If I talk to her or Caden, since we picked up to Sony. But... All right, here we go. <laughs> I I sound like I'm gearing up for something, but I just have to tell her to I take the, the files. It's, so. <laughs> it's not a big deal. You know the data you took from those Geth control nodes, the information you uploaded to Alliance Control. I want a copy of it. You want to bring this data back to the migrant fleet. Those files have information that could be vital to our efforts to understand the Geth. It could be the key to helping us reclaim our homeworld.
Sorry about that. I uh, had a phone call. Uh, I'm going to actually have to leave right after I do this, so... <laughs> and again, there again, <laughs> the, the life of a streamer, I guess. But, um, the life of a non... like, someone who does it as a hobby, I guess. If I give you this data, your pilgrimage is over. You'll go back to your own people. Not right away. I'll stay with you as long as it takes to stop Seret. But my people need this. You think you can use this information to destroy your enemy? Not right away. We will need to study it. It could take years. But it will give us new insight into how the Geth have changed and evolved over the past centuries. Go ahead. Make a copy. My people, I owe you a great debt, one I can never repay. The only thing I can offer in return is what you already have. My solemn promise to stay with you until Saren and his Geth armies are defeated. I never wanted anything more. Thank you, Shepard. So... Tally's arc is, uh... Probably my favorite in the first three games. Liara's is really good too, but uh, I prefer to play as Femshep, so I almost always go with Liara, but for Broshep, it's definitely Tally. Uh, because starting with Mass Effect 2, you can romance Tally. So she, you get a little bit more character development and stuff with her when you're a Broshep. Well, that's going to do it for me. Uh, I actually have to run and uh, do an errand right quick, so I might come back and uh, I haven't even taken a shower. Like, I just ate breakfast and came straight in to my room and started streaming, so I might take a shower and just get ready for the day and then come back and do some more. We'll see what happens, but this will make it a lot easier to uh, <laughs> separate into episodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I forget it's a two-sided elevator, so... Uh, I'll probably... Well, whatever. I'll just go to my usual episode starting point here, so... Message from Admiral Hackett, oh. Commander. Patching it through. Great. <laughs> we just received your report. Looks like this Geth incursion was bigger than we thought. They were probably preparing for a major offensive in the system. We're increasing patrols in the Armstrong cluster. Yeah, sure yeah, yeah, come on. Another foothold in the region. Nice job, Shepard. You saved a lot of human lives on this mission. Hack it out. I don't care. I helped Tally. That's all I care about. <laughs> okay. All right. So, thank you for watching. This has been POD7, and I'm signing out.